From puzzling motives to baffling clues, these chilling tales will leave you captivated and yearning for answers. Can you unravel the mysteries that still haunt the annals of medieval history? Get ready to embark on a journey that will test your detective skills and leave you pondering the enigmatic nature of these mysterious medieval murders. In medieval England, a royal officer called Corona was tasked with investigating sudden or mysterious deaths. Deaths from violence were common, therefore the Corona would swear in a jury of local men to determine what happened to the suspects and find out how the victim died. Some of the documents kept by coroners in the 13th century have made it to the present day. John Burrell On September 19, 1298, a mortal wound on the crown of his head, six inches long and in depth, reaching to the brain, and another wound on the forehead, but not mortal, were observed by Adam de Spalding, coroner on the morning of the day after John Burrell's death in the town jail, which occurred on the Thursday after the exaltation of Holy Gross, in the 26th year of King Edward. On the same day, representatives from the four neighbouring parishes, St. Michael's North, St. Mildred's, St. Martin's and All Saints, appeared before the aforementioned Corona to conduct an inquest. All of the sworn men in that inquest say, under oath, that on the said Thursday, the accused John Burrell was drinking late at night at the house of Thomas de Staunton with other Irish clerks, and that another Irish clerk, Nicholas de Ulleré, and another Irish clerk, John de Stuffoak, along with other clerks, were sitting in the same house, drinking in fellowship apart, and not with others. Finally, a verbal altercation broke out, prompting everyone to leave the house in a tussle. As soon as they entered the street, however, John Burrell pulled out his sword and immediately attacked Nicholas, prompting him to flee with raising a commotion. John de Sotfork likewise did the same, but he too managed to get away. And when the said Nicholas saw that there was no way out of the impending danger of death, he drew his sword, and repelling force by force in self-defense, lest he should be slain, he smote the said John Burrell on his forehead, but not mortally, and yet the said John attacked the said Nicholas with his sword more violently, swiftly and bitterly than he had done before, and when he would and should have. And then by verdict of the district, Nicholas was brought before H. de Brunterstone and I. Nerimet, justices assigned for a jail delivery at Oxford, and John de Sotfork was brought before the same justices, convicted of the murder by verdict of the district, and delivered to the Bishop of Lingen as he was a clerk. Philip Port On March 8, 1305, Philip Port of Westwall was discovered dead in the parish of St. Peter in the east, around the ninth hour between the north wall of the town on the Monday after the feast of St. Gregory Pope in the 33rd year of King Edward. Richard de Canterbury was the first to find him dead and immediately raised the hue. On the same day, he was viewed by Ralph de Hampton and John Bronchies, who had been chosen in the presence of the mayors and bailiffs to the right hand of the said Philip, was severed and laid by his side, and it appeared to all present that he had been struck on the head with a hatchet, known in English as a spath. The front of the said Philip was slashed open from year to year, and his brains had spilled out. On the same day, an inquisition was held before the same Ralph and John, with the testimony of sworn men from the surrounding parishes. And all the said jurors say upon their oath that on Sunday last, late in the dusk of the evening, John de Burden of the county of Leicestershire in Kibbold Street came to the lodging where the said Philip's abode in the parish of St. Peter in the East and called him as he was in his chamber, asking him to come with him to a beer tavern, promising that he would give him a drink. And he came out. They claimed they have no idea who the five clerks were or where they lived, but that John de Burton was the man responsible for the most circumstances surrounding his untimely demise. Richard, the finder, has promised to appear before the judges at the upcoming assizes, and Adam de Essex and Hugh de Burton have sworn to this. David de Trempedwy On December 22, 1296, a clerk named David de Trempedwy, who lived near the East Gate of Oxford, passed away in his room on the eve of St. Thomas the Apostle on the 25th year of King Edward. The next day, Adam de Spalding, the Oxford coroner, examined him and found a large cut in his left breast made with a long knife. On the Sunday following the feast of St. Nicholas, around the hour of curfew, the said David accompanied a harlot named Christiana of Worcester to a street called 
Collis Strait and entered one of the schools and there certain clerks whose names are unknown came upon him who were lying in wait for the said David and made an assault on him and so in that assault he was wounded whereof he died on the following Monday. Thomas de Weston on June 26, 1306, Thomas de Weston, Hayward of the Abbot of Ossonay, was found dead in the grange of said abbot at Walton near Oxford on the eve of the nativity of St. John the Baptist in the 34th year of King Edward's reign at the ninth hour, and on the Sunday next following, in the morning, he was viewed by John Wyth, King's coroner of the town of Oxford, and he had two wounds on. On the preceding Thursday night, the said Thomas de Wheaton went to watch the meadows of the Lord towards Godstow, where he was wont to do by day and night, lest any mischief should be done in them. And so he tarried there until the hour of midnight, and then began to return towards his lodging where he abode in the said grange. And when he came at the entering of the Walton, wishing to go towards his lodging, and Thomas, realizing that he was in mortal danger, escaped from their hands and fled. And as he was fleeing, Louis, who was holding a strong bow in his hand, shot him with a small arrow in the back, even to the heart, whereof he died at the aforesaid hour, but he had all his church rites. The rumour mill also claims the aforementioned Henry de Sutton was present and approved of the fact but he himself did not cause any harm to the victim. The bailiffs are also instructed to safely hold the aforementioned Louis, John de Peckford and Henry de Sutton until the King's justices arrive in the area. John Lawrence On April 22, 1297, in the 25th year of King Edward, on the Monday before the Feast of St. George the Martyr, John Lawrence passed away in the lodging where he had been resident of St. Peter in the Bailey. The four neighbouring churches convened that day to hold an inquiry before the aforementioned coroner. All the jurors at the inquest swear under oath that at night on Palm Sunday, a clerk named David the Northampton was walking down the street near his lodging in the parish of St. Michael North, just outside the city's northern wall, while reciting his prayers and reciting his oracles. Upon meeting the clerk, the aforementioned John Lawrence pushed him with his shoulder twice in an attempt to start a fight. The aforementioned David then urged the man to leave him alone before entering his dwelling, at which the aforementioned John pounded on the door twice, and the said David stepped forth with a staff and struck him in the head, causing him to fall on the ground, and he beat him with the staff on his shoulders, back, reins, and throughout his entire body, causing his death on the Monday before. After surviving for 15 days, he was granted full church privileges. In the meanwhile, however, both David and John Lawrence were brought before Master John Bloyo, the commissary of the Chancellor of the University of Oxford, and found guilty at an inquest held before the commissary. That's all for the video today. We'll be right back with more, so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.